the way to be the best in real life is to focus on serving well the audience that you see every day. This is Keys to the Shop, episode 492, what it takes to be the best coffee shop. Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Keys to the Shop, a podcast where we give you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. If you're a trainer, manager, owner, barista who is ambitious and serious about serving people and developing a career and leading well, managing well. And you know this coffee shop thing is not just a, a passing thing for you, but it is a platform on which you wish to serve others, serve great coffee, and just become a better version of yourself every day in that pursuit. Then this is why we have made this podcast. It is why now there's almost a thousand episodes of this show. And I would welcome you to subscribe to Keys to the Shop wherever you get your podcasts. It's a great idea to be updated as new episodes come out. And also you can check us out on YouTube at Keys to the Shop. And of course, I'd be honored if you would follow Keys to the Shop on Instagram at Keys to the Shop. You know, one of the things that I spend the most of my time doing is also consulting and coaching. A lot of one-on-one clients that I work with have me out to their cafes to do assessments and then coaching. A lot of people just go straight for the consultation and coaching sessions over a span of many months to focus specifically on many different circumstances. It could be revamping certain processes in the cafe could be leadership and management and cultural refinement. It might be scaling the business. There's people starting coffee shops as well that work with Keys to the Shop one-on-one. And if that's something that you're thinking about and you think, well, you know, I've always considered maybe I should work with a coach or consultant. And if that's you, then I would just say, let's have a conversation. As somebody who has hired coaches and consultants for myself before, I know that it can be an intimidating process or just a thought. But having a conversation is just kind of a nice thing to do just to explore it. No obligation. Just let's see how you're doing in your cafe, where you're at, and how Keys to the Shop can help you get to where you'd like to be, where you need to be. So just reach out, chris at keystotheshop.com, C-H-R-I-S at keystotheshop.com, and maybe we'll get to work together. And if it's not the right fit, then at least we'll have a great conversation. Again, chris at keystotheshop.com. Com. And real quick, I want to also mention that we have these coaching groups coming up for the last year, key holder coaching groups, these mastermind groups of experienced coffee shop owners that come together for a six month period, 12 two hour sessions, lots of really focused quality time focused on each other's issues and challenges and opportunities and all of it geared to create accountability, community, and insights that will help you build yourself and build your business well. And so this has been such a rewarding thing to see the current membership really transform themselves and their business through this community. And maybe this is right for you. If you want information, again, chris at keystotheshop.com, or you can follow the link in our show notes, go right to the application to be considered for membership for this new cohort of owners that is gonna be put together starting late September, 2024. Again, email chris at keystotheshop.com or you can just follow the link in the show notes to the application and then we'll have a conversation from there. Either way, look forward to talking with you. All right, everybody. Well, later on in the episode, we're going to get to talk a little bit about our sponsors. That is the Barista Series from Pacific over at uh, pacificfoodservice.com and also Ground Control, the awesome brewer, uh, the Ground Control Brewer. Uh, We get to talk about that later on today as well at groundcontrol.coffee. So stay tuned for that. But I want to start us off just with our, our topic, which is this idea of being the best coffee shop. What does it mean? What does it require of you to be the best coffee shop? There are lots of different levels of this, and I wanted to get into this because I've been following some accounts, and I have always, over over my career, been pondering the idea of what the best means. And there's a few things we need to unpack about this idea. Okay, there are competitions out there. And the reason why there are competitions is because we need a framework that 
allows us to try to measure the quality or the value or the worth of something as a way of letting us know that what we're doing is good, that it's quality of work, that in the end we can feel good about what we're doing. Really, that's what we want. I mean, if you boil it all down to what these things mean, it gives us permission to be at peace with the work that we've been doing because we've been validated by an external source that in our minds feels objective, or at least we've believed in their objectivity, if just temporarily. And it's outside of our own minds, which can be very much filled with doubt and uncertainty and we're plagued with imposter syndrome. And that kind of stuff really cages us, you know, and we can't break free of that perspective. And so when another entity says, this place is the best coffee shop, or we win a competition, it feels like, you know what, I've doubted myself for so long, and because these people outside of my mind and my ecosystem have also seen this, that means that I'm doing good work. And I think there's value in that, okay? There is some kernel of pure truth within the what you can assume, based on how I've set this up, I believe is a mixture of motives and inaccuracies and contextual issues that I think you owe it to yourself and we owe it to ourselves to admit exist. The spoiler to all this is that best is never an objective measurement. It's always contextual. And because of that, it cannot be a forever metric that we use in our businesses. In fact, it can't even really be a cornerstone of our business. The most award-winning coffee shop in the world, hypothetically, doesn't necessarily have the best coffee. It doesn't have the best baristas necessarily, okay? Now it can be rewarded within a construct for those things. If you're performing a popularity contest kind of a competition where it's simply like the city newspaper or the city paper of your town says vote on your favorite coffee shop in so and so town often what you'll see is the place with the most locations has already won and so second place in those competitions often feels like first place because it's a given that this one place that has a lot of customers is always going to win because it's not really set up to measure certain things that you feel they should measure. And we all know that it is super subjective. And this is often the case when people write articles. When people write articles about the best coffee shops in all 50 states, you know that some intern somewhere at an online magazine that's struggling for views is trying to figure it out based on Yelp reviews or or, you know, which celebrity sightings were at what cafe. And so it's kind of this art of what's going to get the most clicks, but let's couch it in the objective, the faux objective idea that we scoured the internet or we scoured the earth and all these other phrases that allow us the temporary fiction that indeed my coffee shop, <laughs> since it was selected by USA Today or salon.com or something like that, it means we, we were the best. We're the best. Look at this. It says we are the best. I mean, this is Elf 101, right? The best coffee shop. You did it. Look, congratulations. Because you put it on a sign and even because a magazine says so or even a food critic doesn't necessarily make it so. Now, here's the thing. We should celebrate those things because there is some element of being recognized as a popular enough place. And why would you be popular? Because people go to you. People go to your coffee shop for many, many reasons. And they have put you in a position where you could be recognized by people who are ill-equipped to judge the success of a coffee shop. And because of that, you should say, thank you. And you should use it in your marketing. And we all do. So even if we know that this was somebody throwing darts at a dartboard and it landed on your coffee shop, you owe it to your <laughs> customers and to yourself to, I guess, kind of pretend like this was the highest of high honors 
And you don't, what you don't want to do is look down. In other words, you don't want to go back in time and look at some of the other selections that they made. And some of us who are in the industry know the behind the scenes and understand like, well, how could they ever choose that place? Oh, because they have an awesome Instagram wall. Oh, because they have a clown theme in their cafe. And that's so, that's so cute and unique and maybe even creepy. But it's so recognizable. That's the best. And it's just wild. And as somebody who's spent a lot of time doing different kinds of judging for competitions, it's really difficult to create a set of criteria to judge the best. So getting out of this whole super subjective publications assessment of best coffee shops and people who just never even set foot in the coffee shop judging what the best in the state or the best in the world is. It's ridiculous, of course. But again, there is some kind of peripheral acknowledgement that at least you're popular enough to have been considered and to raise the awareness of this person who's putting this together. So there's that. All right, so now we go from the super subjective world of outsiders judging coffee shops, a lot of times really based on their aesthetics and other things that are maybe a lot more superficial than we'd like them to be. Let's go to competitions like Best Baristas. I put together a competition that I didn't actually give the title to. It wasn't my decision. I wouldn't have called it this. It was called America's Best Coffee Shop. It's a little bit of uh, an extreme title, but again, I wasn't in charge of that, but it was a team-based coffee shop competition. And there are other competitions out there. You know, you have the traveling competition La Marzocco put on at Crush the Rush and the Barista League and Coffee Masters and so forth. Now, these are all constructs that focus on what they believe are critical elements of successful coffee shop and bar work. Within that ecosystem, they can judge the best, but that's only the best in competition. That's only the best within the construct and the very narrow range of disciplines that that competition represents. And as best as you can possibly get it to reflect real life, it's always going to be an inaccurate reflection of real life. And we have to admit that just as much as we have to admit the subjectivity and the inaccuracies of being voted best coffee shop in your state by someone who's never been to your coffee shop. Because if we don't, then what I think we're going to do, and I I do see a lot of people doing, is creating some kind of a narrative that they actually are the best because of these things. These are useful tools of reflection of one little sliver of the life of your business. And just like a snapshot or a real quick video of you at the beach with your family, you can celebrate that moment. But really, it is just a reflection of a very narrow range of disciplines and a temporary platform that has some utility for personal development and also helps shape some disciplines in the industry because of how many people participate in it. But given enough time to go on, competitions become measures unto themselves. And because of the need for marketing themselves and growing themselves and becoming sustainable as competitions, must focus their attention away from reflecting real life and only really reflect their past and their history and do well unto themselves, which is really what they always were, a reflection of how well you do in that limited sphere of coffee work right? So even in competitions that are meticulously designed to reflect certain isolated areas of discipline in the cafe, the life of the cafe really is only able to be experienced in the cafe as it's happening. Everything else is a representation, a dramatization, a reflection, or something like that. And so you can't ever derive truly an assessment of being the best from those which means that the only thing that you have to go on because it's the only place you can truly experience reality is reality, is the daily work. And that's super frustrating because that is huge and it's not as tangible as a 15-minute presentation or in the America's Best Coffee Shop competition, it was uh, like 45 minutes or I don't know how long Coffee Masters is, but it's day in, day out. And so because real life business is so difficult, it's easy for us to really create, uh, we yearn for and create these little vignettes of life 
that give us a little bit of encouragement to reflect some things that we are doing well. And, and you know, I will say there's nothing wrong with that. And they are fun, lots of art competitions and all these other things. They are slices of life, but not life itself. And so you couldn't say, if somebody won the World Barista Championships, you are not the best barista. And hopefully everyone who wins that thing would be very ready to say so. You are the best competition barista within that year, right? Are you the best latte artist in the world because you win the Coffee Fest's World Latte Art Championship Open versus the World Latte Art Championship at through the uh, World Coffee Events? It's very hard to say, but does that make you a great barista because you can pour latte art? <laughs> I will say a 100% no uh, on that one, just as much as if you can make a great pour over, it doesn't make you a great barista or because you can open many shops and create a profitable business doesn't make you a good boss. Okay, so if you're going to take an isolated element that is supposed to be working in concert with other things, that thing will not prove the whole. But we like to imagine that it does because that brings us satisfaction. And this is the crux of what we're talking about right now. It gives us an opportunity to check out from measuring ourselves according to the things that really do matter in the coffee shop versus the things that we really want to matter that are more achievable versus focusing our attention on all of these other areas outside of our coffee shop that are giving us that feel good feeling. So what we're up against is fighting our desire to maintain a certain level of cognitive dissonance that we almost feel like is a form of self-care. Like I will believe that I'm the best coffee shop in the state because it makes me feel good, darn it. And because of what they said, I 100% believe them. Like, okay, I don't think you shouldn't celebrate certain things, but at the same time, we shouldn't let that be something that we celebrate more and focus on more than the things that actually do matter in the cafe. And what I think we need to do here right now is talk about what those things are. How can you be the best coffee shop? Hey everybody, we're gonna get right back to our episode here, but I did mention that I wanted to talk to you about our sponsors today. And I want to start with the Ground Control Brewer, which uses SCA award-winning technology to unlock the potential of coffee. And for many years now, they have been just taking the coffee world by storm, elevating all of our expectations on batch brew coffee, but also because of that extraction technology, the Ground Control can actually create espresso concentrates for batch diced lattes, cold brew concentrate for cold brew batching as well. And so this machine is kind of like an all-in-one machine. The new model is actually smaller than the original Cyclops. It can fit in more spaces in the cafe. It has 30% higher output of the concentrates. And so you should check them out at groundcontrol.coffee if you're looking for a showpiece, an elevation in quality, an all-in-one machine that helps your cafe stand out in all the right ways. Check them out again over at groundcontrol.coffee. And I also want to mention the Barista series, the line of plant-based performance beverages designed for baristas and tested by world-class professional baristas before it reaches your bar. And it, it really shows. I mean, this is a meticulously crafted beverage the way that you would create a latte. They create these plant-based beverages. So it stands up to the heat from steaming, has great texture for latte art. It also keeps the balance focused on the coffee. The flavor balance is focused on the coffee. So a lot of things to love about this. It's why it's preferred by so many across the world. Check them out at pacificfoodservice.com. Get samples and try it for yourself. And I truly think that if you're looking for the best plant-based beverages for your customers, you should be checking out the Barista Series from Pacific. All right, everyone, let's get back to how to be the best coffee shop. So let's lay out here a few things that really make you the best coffee shop. And the first thing comes from a phrase that we used to say back in the USB-C days of the early 2000s all the time. And what we used to say is, every customer is a judge. And the reason that was said is because rather than trying to focus all your energy on this pageantry of the competition, translate what you're doing now to your customers. Does that mean you force them to stir five times and let it sit on your palate, gargle with it for three seconds while you're looking at the moon? 
before you evaluate? No, it's that we take the intentionality that we're trained to do in competition and use that muscle to be intentional in the context of the cafe. I fear that what we've tried to do is the reverse a lot of times where we want bars to be reflections of competition arenas rather than taking the lessons we learn in these arenas and contextualizing them to our cafes for the customer's benefit. It's a form of hospitality to lay down your desire for that kind of self-satisfied but irrelevant to most customers bar work and to do something that may not win you a competition, but it wins you a customer, but it wins you the hearts and minds of your community. And if every customer truly is a judge, and they are truly the judge, and if they're not buying coffee, it's because we are not making coffee well enough, we're not giving a good enough value proposition for them in the experience, and ultimately, guess what happens? You don't sell coffee, you go out of business. And so the customer has to be the priority, they are the judge, and if you think about the fact that the competitions and the best of and the best in the world at this and the best in the world at that is all based on subjective opinions of a group of people, an audience, if you will, then you have to admit that the way to be the best in real life is to focus on serving well the audience that you see every day. That would naturally be the first thing that you would think we really need to serve them well. Best in that way is a conversation. It's not just a presentation. It's not a lecture, just as much as you know having a one-on-one -on -one with your staff. It's not a lecture of you getting to like put together a PowerPoint and say, here are all these things and here's all this information. I like the way David White puts it, the poet David White, he talks about the conversational nature of reality. The what is conversing with the becoming and the horizon between the two, it's exactly what creates a quality expression of coffee. It's ephemeral, it's temporary, it is like latte art. You can judge it in the moment when you take it outside the bounds of its conversational nature. It's dissecting a frog. It's dead, but you could see what's inside it. You can say, oh, this was the best of the dissected frogs. But you know what? It's still dead and it still stinks. So <laughs> when we're talking about judging the best coffee shop, we have to be careful how much we've outsourced our ability to be happy with the work we do to how many accolades we've got from outside entities that can only judge the isolated and therefore not really alive parts of our businesses and tune into the conversational nature of how customers judge your business on a day in and day out basis. And so truly being the best coffee shop and how to be the best coffee shop is dependent on how well you are plying your trade of intentionality through coffee in service to the groups of people that make up your business. That means the staff, that means the customers and community, and that also means what you're doing for the business itself as a sort of a uh, entity in and of itself, listening to and serving well the business as it grows and how it serves you and your family, because ultimately as the owner of this business, you need to make sure that you're stewarding those resources well enough that you get the fruit of your labor as well as the people who are interacting with the business in those other groups. Now, best is also often synonymous with free from mistakes or needless mistakes. And I think that's kind of fair. If you did a thing and you did it well, and well, like best, often insinuates that it had the fewest number of mistakes. If you're watching the Olympics, you see people, they don't stick the landing or they do stick the landing. If somebody is the best, they had fewer stumbles. They had less splashing. They, <laughs> they did or did not hop like a kangaroo during a breakdancing session, whatever. But the idea is that a world free from mistakes equals something better than a world with mistakes. Now, there are necessary mistakes or somewhat inevitable mistakes, and then there are avoidable ones. Best coffee shop is the one that reduces as much as possible 
needless mistakes and handles with grace and resiliency and creativity the mistakes that do come that whether preventable or not they just they happened but we work with the ups and downs of the business to create a higher low just like a performance every day what are you doing you're trying to create a better performance so that the judges your customers your staff right the community can see that yesterday you didn't stick the landing today we fixed that we did stick the landing we adjusted what we were doing and now we're very consistent with our beverages now that table doesn't wobble now we are way better at promoting items ahead of time on social media to give you an opportunity to get here before the rush hour i, I don't know what it is that we can improve on but these things are done as a service to people and if it's our art form if that's our performance then best looks like a progressive move toward more intentionality and sticking the landing more often because we're students of our own businesses you're in competition with yourself in other words and if you want to be the best you've got to have enough knowledge about what you do to know objectively that you have improved if you're only comparing yourself to other people you'll never know if you've improved or not because there's so many people to compare yourself to but there's only one you to compare yourself to right and you have your customers right now whether that's 30 people a day 100 people a day 300 or 500 <laughs> you have this group of people coming in every day that is much more knowable and tangible than these far-flung competitions or comparing yourself against another coffee shop in other parts of the world so being a student of your own business and kind of doing well through it for the sake of the people who depend on it for employment and enjoyment i think that's what makes a coffee shop the best coffee shop so for me this whole thing about being the best of anything is enjoyable to say they want a competition that is drawing inspiration from the world of coffee don't get into this mindset that because you didn't win a best of your city competition or best of all 50 states or the best coffee shop in the world or america's best coffee house or barista championships and that kind of thing that you somehow are not good at what you do and that that is a true and accurate reflection of your failure because it's not a true and accurate reflection of your success either to be selected for those things speaking as somebody who's come from many experiences in mostly all those categories but the happy cafe and the successful cafe the best cafe similar to our friends in switzerland at mame coffee they say the best coffee is the coffee you enjoy it's pretty deep okay and i think that's really something we need to embrace with our coffee shops be honest with yourself you're kind of in competition with yourself you are in this conversation with the day in day out life of your coffee shop it's a dynamic thing but it's way better to spend your energy thinking about the improvements and service you offer every day I mean, progressing toward a better version of that while also just drawing joy and drawing enjoyment from where you are right now you don't need to postpone joy in order to make an achievement you can still be happy doing what you're doing and pursue happiness in the future as well you can be the best right now to be the best in someone else's eyes is overrated unless those eyes are your customers and your staff and truly yourself as you reflect on this ecosystem this this context of your business and i do mean this to encourage you all that glitters is not gold you have a lot more at hand than you think and so i'd encourage you to kind of mind the depths of the thing that you have and as you do you might be surprised how often you start winning other things <laughs> you know you might win best in the city and etc but you know what those things are not going to be i'm not going to say they're not going to be satisfying or very useful in marketing you can collect trophies and all this other stuff and it's fun it's great and I, I still have some of my trophies and, and things and it's it's fun to talk about but as we grow in maturity i think as an industry and as individuals we can start to allow other things that are a little bit more long-lasting and meaningful to take the place of those things in our mind 
and put those things in their proper place. It, it, so it's a, just a matter of priorities. I hope this is making sense to you and that it's helpful. There's going to be some links in the show notes that I think also explore this idea of achievement and competition and comparison and that kind of thing. I'm hopeful for the world of coffee shops that is emerging. I feel like we have begun to extract ourselves from the dependency of constant validation from outside sources and that we have started to focus a little bit more on the roots of our businesses you know, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged by the direction I see the industry going in some ways, the industry, whatever that means. You know, coffee shops in general that want to focus on what they're doing at hand and being just apprenticing themselves to the process of creating something meaningful. Man, if that's not the best, then I don't know what is. And it's much more attainable than you think. So, that's it for me. If you have questions, go ahead and email chris at keys to the shop.com and uh, I'd be happy to answer your questions. Also, if you're interested in coaching and consulting, if you have projects that you're working on with your staff, I work with owners, management teams, and can even come out to your cafe to do an assessment or a workshop with you and your leaders. Lots of different things we can do. I'm very open to opportunities to work with great folks like yourself. So email chris at keys to the shop.com and also consider signing up for or putting an application in for the new key holder coaching groups coming up very soon. We're going to probably end up closing the applications in a week or so from now, the time that you're hearing this episode. So be sure to click on the link in the show notes or just email chris at keys to the shop.com. And with that, that is the end of our show. Thanks everyone. And as always, I hope that this episode has truly given you keys to the shop. <laughs>